Hey guys, today we're back here in the data center. What I wanted to do is have a bit of a look at my HP DL580 Gen 8, this one here. Um, this is what I use as my main ESXi server. So what I wanted to do is potentially look at downgrading the RAM. And why would I do such a thing, downgrade as opposed to upgrade? Um, well I don't think it's actually got the optimal memory configuration in it. And I reckon that if I remove some of the RAM, I might actually be able to get a little bit more speed. Um, so the reason I say that, so this has 96 sticks of RAM in it, which is a huge number, 96. Um, all of those slots are full. What it has, it's got 64 16 gigabyte, 1866 megahertz sticks. And then it's got 32 sticks of 8 gigabytes, 1333 megahertz. So 64 high speed sticks and 32 low speed sticks. Um, but if this server is anything like other servers, and other computers in general, RAM will only ever run at the slowest common speed across all the sticks. So what that would mean is that in this case, those faster sticks are being pulled down to 1333 MHz by the slower sticks. Um, now I'm not actually 100% sure if that is the case with this particular server, the DL580. Um, so this has E7 Xeons, which are a bit of a weird architecture, they're not quite like other CPUs. Um, so in most computers the CPU talks directly to the memory, just straight across, straight line. But with these E7s, there's actually a memory buffer chip that sits in between the two. Um, I might see if I can find a picture and pop it up on the screen. But um, yeah, so the CPU talks to the memory buffer, which I think is called Jordan Creek or something. Whatever, the name's not important. And then the memory buffer then talks to the RAM. Um, so this has a few benefits. There's a couple of reasons why they did it. It lets it address large amounts of memory, hence why this server has 96 sticks of RAM, whereas servers typically have a lot less than that. Um, it also lets the CPU be memory technology agnostic, if you can call it that. So these particular CPUs here are happy to work with either DDR3 or DDR4. They really don't care. Either one will work. Um, but of course, HP being HP, they've actually locked that feature out in the firmware. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if those memory buffer chips will let different sticks or even different channels run at different speeds. But um, yeah, let's find that out together. Um, so I think for starters what I'll do, I'll run a Cinebench benchmark to do a bit of a before and after benchmark to work out if, um, yeah, if this actually does make any difference. So yeah, let's head over to the computer to do that. Alright, so here we are in front of a VM running on the server. This is just a um, stock fresh Windows 10. Uh, there's nothing on it, it's not even activated as you can see. Um, I've also shut down, or actually not shut down, I've migrated away all the other VMs that were running on this ESXi server, so that way the other ones aren't going to steal the resources when they start doing some processing or something. So this thing um, has full access to whatever it wants. Um, I did give it all the CPUs, it's got 120 CPUs, so if we go in here to performance, it's got all of them, so yeah, hopefully we should get a reasonable sort of idea of the performance. Um, now the fact that it's running under a VM will affect it slightly, but yeah, hopefully it's not too much. Um, but yeah, I've got Cinebench R23 here, so let's fire that up to a benchmark and see what sort of score we get. It's always funny when it's just one core out of 120, that's what's holding you up. Alright, here we go. Whoa, check that out. That's crazy. Looks pretty quick already. It's flying through it. Guesses on what number it will be. What do you reckon? Ooh, faster than the Threadripper already. Not bad. Alright, well anyway, let's let that run through. We'll come back in about nine minutes and, um... Yeah, see what we have.
All right, we're back. So we got a score of 30,908. So let's make a little note of that. Let's say before 3908. Okay, now let's go and um, pull those slower sticks of RAM, bring it back up again, and then we'll see what sort of difference that made. All right, now I've already shut down the VM, so let's just kill the server, press the power button. Give it a minute to shut down, maybe we'll fast forward through that. Okay, server is now off, we've got the orange light, so I'll go around the back and um, cut the power from it. Okay, so these servers are really easy to work on. So normally with a server, what you need to do is pull the entire thing out, slide it out of the rack, unplug the cables at the back. Uh, with these, you don't have to, if you're working on the CPUs or the RAM. What you do, you press this blue button here, this big handle pops down, pull on the handle, and this big module slides out. Big heavy module. And then, what you do, you press these buttons, one on each side. And there you go, that's all the CPU and, I mean, sorry, all the CPUs and all the RAM. Oh, alright. So, let's get this thing opened up. Alright, now normally I don't bother with these anti-static wrist straps, they're kind of annoying and they get in the way. But um, I think in this particular case I will use it because there's a lot of RAM in here and yeah, I really don't want to risk zapping it and breaking the server. So we'll get that hooked up. Okay. Um, yeah, so like I said before, this module has all four CPUs and all the RAM in it. We'll get it opened up and I'll show you what it looks like. The lid just comes straight off like that. So here are the CPUs at the back, four heat sinks. Um, and then here we have these um, memory cartridges, eight memory cartridges. So each CPU has two cartridges. Um, I believe these cartridges are where the memory buffer chips are. The buffer chips are actually somewhere inside here. Um, so if we pull one out we'll have a look. Like that, and then it kind of folds open like a little book. Folds open. Um, okay, now I'm completely guessing here, but I'm guessing probably that's the memory buffer under there, and that's like a little heatsink or something. Could be wrong, but that's what I would assume. Um, but yeah, anyway, so each of these books obviously has 12 sticks of RAM, which you can see right there. Um, these taller ones, so 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 on the other side. Those are the higher speed 16 gig sticks, which we're going to be keeping. So we're not going to touch those, but these low profile ones, those are the slower 8 gigs, so we're going to pull all those out. So, yeah, let's go through and do that. Yep, so there's one of them. 8 gig PC3L 10600R. Nothing wrong with that, it's just a bit too slow. Okay, and then when you're done, you just fold it back up again, just like that. Click it together. Um, now when you're putting it back in, see it's got this little door here, this kind of spring-loaded flap that does that. Um, the reason it has this is so that if you remove the cartridge um, and then keep it out because you don't actually need to have eight, so you can have a lesser number if you want, this um, kind of is like an airflow directing flap. So instead of the airflow going through this empty space and effectively being wasted, with this closed the airflow is forced to go through the other ones instead and cool those. So yeah, when you're putting the cartridge back in, you have to open that, 
a little bit tricky and then while you've got it open put the cartridge back in which is also tricky they don't like to go in there it goes and then being careful because it's a bit plasticky actually or is it or is that metal hmm. I think that might actually be metal but anyway be careful anyway because it's expensive close it and that one's done so one down seven to go so let's go through those They're all exactly the same. Each of these cartridges, I'm removing four sticks of RAM. Same four sticks each time. stubborn sometimes and you don't want to force them and break them. Come on, why is it going in? Get in there, all right, back. Okay, so four down, four to go, halfway. Now sometimes they also don't pop up, so you press the button, but then it doesn't pop up like it's meant to, and you need to kind of lever it a bit. Oh, got that side, and then the other one went back down. Yeah, good thing I've got small fingernails, otherwise I can't it. Okay, that's it. That's 32 sticks of RAM removed. Uh, it's not hinging properly. There. All right, so hopefully all these cartridges are seated properly. Because I have had it once before that even though it was, come on, get in there. Yeah, even though they were all kind of down and clicked in, apparently one of them was making a poor contact and the server was complaining about, oh, memory cartridge something, whatever the error was. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's all done, so let's pop the lid back on. Alright, I'll show you all the RAM that we pulled out, got it just here in a pile. That's what we removed just then, 32 sticks of 8 gigs, which is 256 gigs, so yeah. Um, unfortunately, this is not for sale, so if you want it then I'm sorry, um, I'm keeping it for spares. But yeah, let's go get this put back in the server. Alright, now surprise surprise, installation is a reverse of what we've already done. So, slide it in. Once it clicks it's secured, so then you push it the rest of the way. And when it gets to that point, lift the handle up. And now this little blue button, sometimes it doesn't really want to go in, you see that, even though I'm pushing it, it's not clicking. Um, yeah, okay. Um, give me a second to get a screwdriver and then I'll force it. I'm sure this is not the HP approved method, but it's the method that works. So what you do, you push it in and then kind of lever it down. Oh, there we go, got it in. Alright, I'll go around the back, connect the power. Okay, and that should boot up on its own because I've got auto power on set in the BIOS. Give it a second, make sure it comes on. Alright, here it comes. Pretty loud while it's starting up, but the fans obviously do ramp down. Actually, just for fun, you know, I'm going to pull a fan and show you how loud it gets when all the others ramp up to 100%. Watch this. Yeah. 
didn't quite do it. I think it's still starting to lay a lower, but um, anyway, whatever, it's not important. All right, so we'll give that a little while to start up. It takes about 10 minutes or so, and then we'll come back and rejoin then. Okay, we're back. So this is the exact same VM we saw before. Um, got Cinebench R23 running. Uh, I haven't changed any of the settings. The VM still has the same CPUs. You can see right there, 120. It's got the same amount of RAM, which is 64 gigs. Only thing that's changed is those slow sticks of RAM came out. So, uh, yeah, where's the score we got last time? Here. So remember, it was 30,908. Let's run through and see what we get this time. Hopefully it's faster. Let's see. Right, thinking, loading. Okay, here it goes. So I remember the first one, it was a bit faster than this thread ripper here. So hopefully it's more than a bit this time. Okay, it's hard to tell, um, yeah, we're going to have to wait until it, oh, actually, it says right there, I didn't know you could do that, 31769, okay, well, it's not massively faster, but, um, anyway, let's let it run through the whole thing, and then we'll look at the score at the end, so, yeah, I'll see you in nine minutes. Alright, so there's our score, 31,489. So it dropped slightly from what it was, but um, if we compare it to our before score, it is slightly higher. Not massively so. Um, let's work out the percentage calculator. Uh, 3908. Uh, it's 2% faster. So, I mean, it's really not much, and you probably wouldn't even notice it out of um, outside of synthetic benchmarks, um, but well, anyway, at least I've proven what the difference is, so yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I was hoping for a bit more, I was hoping for maybe like 5% or something like that, but um, yeah, if you've got one of these servers or a similar server with the same type of CPUs, at least now you know what sort of difference you will get by using faster versus slower RAM, so um, Yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this has been interesting for you. Um, chuck us a like and a subscribe. Yeah, catch you later.